Hello beautiful bookish family and welcome or welcome back to Coffee Over Apples. My name is Steph. This is a video in which I, a graduate level art student, actually review and unpack some of the amazing things that I saw in the anime called Blue Period. <sighs> Blue Period has completely stolen my heart and I am so excited to talk to you about it. We have so many things to cover. I'm basically going to go into full spoilers in this video for most things. I'm not really going to go in a chronological order. I'm just going to talk off the cuff and freely about the things that stuck out to me the most, give you a general summary of the show, and go at it. The manga is still ongoing and the anime has paused after season one which if I'm not mistaken if you know better than me please be sure to let me know in the comments I think season one stops at about volume six or seven of the manga so I don't know where it's going next because I have not continued the manga yet I'm only on manga volume I want to say five but I finished season one of the anime and it was so Perb, it is going down as one of my favorite anime series ever. Like, ever, 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 ever. I could change the world. I don't even know where to begin. Let's start with a general summary of the show. So, if you watch this show, chances are that you probably have some sense of art appreciation, but it is generally following a young high school boy named Yatora, who is kind of like your run-of-the-mill jock, but also a nerdy kid, and he's just always really been good at studying and good at school, and just kind of like a normal guy, but he ends up stumbling into the art club at his high school seeing something that is a challenge and trying to step up to that challenge because it's giving him a sense of purpose. I love this so much as a coming of age story because it is talking about what it means to be not only a high school art kid but to find your place and to find something that actually drives you and motivates you. And for him, that's the challenge of art being something that you can't just solve with an equation. You may think that there's a formula to it, but mm, how wrong you might be. So, therefore, we meet a cast of many other characters that I'm going to try to talk about. Honestly, if it's not our main three, which is Yatora, Yuka, Oba-sensei, the other teacher, and uh, Yotasuke, I think is his name. I don't remember everyone else's name, so I'm just going to kind of refer to them by a description and insert their picture here. But I loved the show. I, I gotta say, the teachers... I fall in love with them because that's literally what I do for a living and I love it so much. I love watching the way that they motivate their students. But let me begin by unpacking a little bit of why Yatura struggles so much with his art. Art being extremely subjective, he is coming at it from a very objective point of view. In one way of expressing it, I find him to be compositionally challenged, which becomes more evident as he begins to study with Oba-sensei, which is the teacher at the cram school, because Yatora can only afford to go to an art college or university by getting into the Tokyo University of the Arts, I believe it's called, because if you get accepted there, it's affordable, and I think you get a full ride or something like that, which is not unheard of. Um, there was a school in New York City called Cooper Union. I don't know that they're necessarily doing this anymore. Yay! But if you were to get accepted to Cooper Union, you would get a full scholarship to get in. But it has a very extensive art exam and portfolio review and a very low margin of passing. But... He's determined to get into this because it's something that he's driven to do 
Through this, we see his support of his family challenging the notions of what established success is from his family by telling them he wants to go to art school, which is very extremely nerve wracking for his parents who just want a good future for their son, something that they know he's going to be comfortable and potentially lucrative. But they support him. They support what he does and they don't understand it, but they root for him and that wholesome parental unit it just oh, it, I love it so much it makes me so happy on the opposite end of the spectrum we have Yuka who is a transgender youth and is just really really struggling they do not have family that is supportive unless it's their sweet grandmother oh Yuka's grandma I love her grandma so much but everyone else is not supportive of either their passions or their gender identity and it's extremely painful to watch but it is so real and raw not only is this something that i think that everyone should watch as a great high school show but the idea that we are directly tackling the plight of transgender youth in japanese society not just in the school place, but in the home and in society dynamics and how that actually pushes individuals into losing track of themselves and motivation because of the extra unnecessary struggles that they have to face is just so mind boggling. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about Yuka a little bit later on, but right now let's focus on Yatora. So Yatora is studying to pass the exam at the school. Now earlier I said that Yatsura is compositionally challenged is my word to describe him, but it's because he's going about it and saying, okay, if I understand the elements and principles of art, if I understand how to paint, then I just have to paint like the masters and it'll turn out great and I'll get accepted. But what he was being pushed by his teachers to understand is that it really ends up being much more of an exam of your ability to edit, revise, and explore much more than your ability to paint. So it's not fair for exams to only accept people that are good. Good is subjective. If you want to put it on a scale and compare it to an old master's painting like Vermeer's um, Girl with a Pearl Earring, it's not fair because there's different movements, there's different times, there's different mediums, there's different experiences. And just because those artworks did something at their time doesn't mean that that is a universal standard, right? So it's kind of coming from the same vein of like, just because something is expensive doesn't mean that it's good. So he is struggling with what it means to create good art, which he eventually does learn that it is more about the process of exploration rather than his ability to create. Because you can create a, a, a thousand versions of the same beautiful painting, but all that you're really proving is that you're able to kind of like bottle those skills and do re iterations. Um, that you're able to be consistent in execution, but execution does not necessarily equal effectiveness. So what's a great point to this is there's a scene, I don't remember which episode it was, but it was when he was first showing his work in the school and his school was doing this thing where they rank people. So there would be three shelves in the classroom and everyone's artwork would be ranked. I personally am not a fan of ranking students' artwork. I don't think that that's effective because what it essentially does is it pits students against each other. However, I do think that there should be awards for best in show. And I also personally give an award at the end of the year for uh, rigor because to me, 
rigor demonstrates itself much more clearly in a student who is not only exploring materiality and concept, but is actually taking the time to reflect on their execution, reflect on their material choices, reflect on their subject matter, cohesiveness, reflect on the semiotics that are being present and available and utilized within that piece to communicate with their audience. So it doesn't make sense to me to rank them from best to worst because art is so subjective and there is no worst. If it's best to worst, then essentially what I'm telling you is that my taste is God and I'm not. So that's not fair. Best in show is usually set to the side for a particular work that is clearly has a very defined level of execution and effectiveness and imagery that is utilized to say something very specific and or incorporate audience interpretation as a factor into that and how audience interpretation is utilized as a modes of communication. But that does not mean that other students did not work extremely hard and so therefore to me it makes sense to have rigor as an accountable award. Which is why, and this is going to be a little bit spoilery because it's towards the very end of the season one, that um, when Yatora passes the TUA exam, it's because of how he has interpreted the prompts. In the very first prompt that he works with, the focus of that prompt is actually more on interpretation. So realistically, the expectation is that a lot of people are going to go into that prompt, which is about self-reflection and about a self-portrait very literally and just do a straight self-portrait with the interpreted understanding that the goal is to show off your skills and creating the most realistic self-portrait but honestly anyone can do that so it's not about creating a super realistic self-portrait and it's not about creating something that's extremely stylized because again style is subjective it's about how do you use your visual vocabulary to create an examination of what a portrait is what he ends up creating is extremely profound in my opinion because it's playing with planes and depth and perception to bring in the notion using very simplistic means of what does it mean to have multiple facets to a portrait? What constitutes a portrait? If I take out my hair, is it still me? If I take out my mouth, is it still me? What does removing an aspect of a portrait say about the individual in question, both being represented and reflected? Fantastic in my opinion. The second prompt for the exam was to draw the nude model that was there and in this he switched to focusing more on materiality. This is where it's important that the exploration aspect of it came in and which in which he was able to more apply not only his personal style but a personal investigation of style through the pushing and pulling of material both within the canvas and around the canvas. Yes, it took him a long time to get to that. However, what that really demonstrates right there is that the first idea is usually not the best idea. It's okay to revise because revision is the key to successful artistry. There's hundreds, probably thousands of times in which the first idea that I come up with in the studio is definitely not only not the idea that ends up being brought out, but ends up being put on the back burner and sometimes tossed out completely because a lot of the time artists, we need to actually create something and go through the motions to determine whether it is as effective in reality as it was cognitively totally fine. He goes through that process step by step. It does 
read a little bit as procrastination, but I don't think that it was procrastination at all. It seems like procrastination because of his panic and thinking, oh my gosh, it's the last day of the exam, there's nothing on my canvas, what do I do? But sometimes that pressure pushes you outside of your comfort zone and being outside of your comfort zone, being comfortable with being uncomfortable is the core of this anime. That is it at its core. While we're talking about being uncomfortable while comfortable, we have two avenues here that we can go to examine the story of Yuka and also of Yotasuke, who, which, by the way, I totally ship Yatora with either Yuka or Yotasuke. He was serving by energy, and I love that for him. Um, so I was feeling a little bit of, like, rivals to lovers between Yatora and Yotasuke, but then also enemies to lovers with Yatora and Yuka. But let's focus on Yuka right now. Yuka not only went through the struggle of trying to have their identity accepted both by their family and by their potential love interests, but as an artist, the feeling of imposter syndrome at least in my experience, kind of never goes away because you're constantly surrounded by everyone else. And when you really love what you do, especially when it comes to art, there's always going to be someone else who has another skill that you don't have or sees the world observationally in a way that you don't, the beautiful part of it, that you see that even though you and your mind are unpacking what is in front of you, there is someone else who is unpacking it from a completely different angle. And so it can easily become a rivalry like it did with our other two characters, but it can also create a sense of imposter syndrome. And that became very real for Yuka. Yuka ends up ultimately, spoiler alert again, walking out of the TUA exam and kind of just completely abandoning art, just calling it a lost cause. And unfortunately, I see that happen very often. Um, it's a very sad thing to do, but I don't blame them for feeling that way because they were not getting any support whatsoever to be able to take all of that energy and redirect it into what is important to them because they have to spend all of their time just trying to survive. Which is why the scene, which was stunningly done, absolutely beautiful in my opinion the the episode where Yatora and Yuka go together to the beach because Yuka is essentially homeless and is like you know what screw it I just want to go rent a room to listen to the beach and the sunrise in the morning because that's what my soul needs right now that was such a beautiful thing for many reasons um one, can we discuss the transgender rep in that scene? We see Yuka essentially in the nude, present, and creating work about examining their own body while also having Yatora there and Yatora using themselves as a subject matter, but creating these self-portraits that are serving so much more than self-portraits. Their examinations of the soul. And I'm not even going to talk about the stylistic choices of it because it's interesting that Yuka drew primarily their face, even though it was their suggestion to draw in the nude, while Yatora drew a self-portrait from the chin to the pelvic area. And that just speaks volumes about their comfortabilities with their bodies. But to have a nude transgender woman present in an anime is like next level representation that we have not had, at least that I have not seen in extremely conservative culture such as Japanese culture and an anime ever. And we need so much more of that. This was like boundary breaking stuff and I loved it. I loved every bit of it. But I'm going to now shift gears a little bit and talk about Yotasuke's relationship with Yatora because it is said 
once uh, Yotasuke finally gets the chance to kind of confront Yatora at a, um, was it like a tour of the college? Yotasuke says that they hate Yatora. And I get that. I get that because it's a conversation about talent and it's a conversation about rivalry but also privilege and appreciation where Yotasuke has been grinding to be good at this for so long and then here comes this pretty boy nerdy guy who's good at everything and lo and behold he's good at this too it resonates back to the very first episode where Yatora walked into the art club and there was another student there whose name I can't remember at the moment but ended up kind of being like the person that Yatora looked up to and when Yatora said to them oh you have so much talent they said in response I don't like that word talent because that word has a connotation that the time and energy that I put into my work came naturally and that's not true because anyone can be good at anything when it's actually all about spirit and that holds true to why Yotasuke has this grudge against Yatora. I want to clarify something by saying like there's nothing wrong with making beautiful paintings. There's nothing wrong with making beautiful drawings. If that's what motivates people to do then that is perfectly well and fine and there are art schools where you can go to gain a specific skill in that specific kind of drawing or kind of painting or kind of creating and those are valid however the difference between the kind of school that Yatora is trying to get accepted to and those kinds of classes is that these are two different schools of thought because there are multiple echelons of the art market and so the former being something that is more product driven in the sense that there's already an established market there are already established dealers and there's a, a very large portion of the art market that is simply looking for artwork that is for decor that is a perfectly fine and lucrative and valid point of entry into becoming an artist but what the program that our students in the anime are trying to get into is more on unpacking the motivations of artwork, art philosophy, art theory to explore what it means to create work that is more academic and or institutional that pushes the boundary of what an established romanticized version of decor is that art is not always just decor that art is an action so if you're watching this and thinking my gosh Steph are you telling me that just because I only draw beautiful flowers that I'm not an artist no I'm not saying that completely at all I'm just saying that there are different trains of thought here and what I love about this particular anime so much is that it really is diving deep into what the process is of becoming a contemporary but also multidisciplinary artist is. What does it mean to be an artist in the 21st century who is interested in either classical work or romanticism but is also questioning whether that work is personally rewarding and what it means to kind of not be satisfied with the skills that you've gained from studying art. I love this so much. What I specifically love is in the first few episodes, I know I'm jumping around but just bear with me, that Yatora confronts his family about wanting to go to an art school and they just don't get it. But that it opens a conversation for people to see that yes, you can make a living off of being an artist and yes, the first occupation that we see there is of the art teachers who, by the way, I love his high school art teacher, the way that she just interacts with the students and is like, yeah, okay, you drew boobs, so what? 
the body is a beautiful thing. Here we appreciate the body and nothing is taboo because art is a facilitator of culture. I love that so much. It it just it hit me right in the soul and it's really important that I think that our youth understand that there is no innovation without creation. You cannot pursue all of the incredible, innovative, scientific, mathematical, anthropological feats and understandings that we've had without having a creative component, which is why museums and galleries and arts and the action of creation is such a fundamental human right, in my opinion. But... The last thing that I'm going to touch on in this video is probably that one character who was like a little bit weird, but I actually kind of like them. I don't even remember the student's name. It was the one with the braids, but he got this kind of sexual arousal every time that he was talking about painting. And I was thinking about it because I feel like it was supposed to have some etchiness to it. But it actually makes a lot of sense because when someone really enjoys what they do, it doesn't necessarily need to go into a sexual appreciation aspect, but it resonates with you in a way that is extremely gratifying. And so it can have the same kind of wave of emotional depth as a kind of sexual arousal but that's not necessarily the case for everyone I'm not sitting here and saying like yes you only appreciate art if you are able to have sexual arousal from understanding materiality like no that is not a thing that I'm telling you everyone does I definitely at least for me don't feel that kind of connection but it is definitely this a thirst that has been quenched by basking in the richness that is arts and culture. And so that's kind of what that character's role was in exemplifying that feeling, but they took it into a completely other aspect and just kind of like turned the dial up on that a little bit, which I guess they had to do in order to start that conversation of how this has a different visceral reaction for everyone, but that's really all that I garnered from that character. Um, I thought that was pretty hilarious. So if you watched it and you thought he was weird, that's kind of my take on what the utilization of their persona was. But I hope that you liked this video and if you also really loved Blue Period, it is amazing. And if this video, you're still here, even despite some of the spoilers and you haven't watched it or you haven't read it, I highly suggest you do. I cannot wait for season two to come out. I'm hoping and predicting that this show will take the turn of showing Yadora actually becoming an established contemporary artist. That would be mind-blowing and I would love it so much. The artwork in both the anime and the show is amazing. I've definitely, I've shown it to my high school students and they absolutely loved it. So if you're an art nerd like me, I hope that you enjoy this. If you like my channel and you'd like to support me, don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up. There is a Kofi in the description in which you can show me thanks by buying me a cup of coffee or there's an affiliate link and other links to other good things, book clubs that I join. And if you just want to say hi, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you later. Bye! What's the Mr. Wonka? Mr. Wonka work the factory.